What's happening? It's Shane here. And in today's video, we are going to be doing this year's version of the top 10 engineering degrees. I'm gonna be basically giving you some insight on stuff that I've only shared with my College 101 course students. Um, I'm basically going to be giving you the cheat sheet to the best engineering degrees. And the way I'm going to do that is by sharing the actual rankings in my degree ranker version 2.0. Just updated it for this year. So this will definitely help you out if you're somebody who is thinking about which engineering degree you want to choose. All right. So without further ado, let's jump right into it right after you gently tap the like button, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. And number 10 on the list is going to be petroleum engineering. Now, the first two on this list, number 10 and number nine, were two types of engineering degrees where the industries that you would likely go into were hit really hard in the last year and a half, two years by the virus that's going around. So that's why these two are going to be lower on the list. Petroleum engineering is in the energy industry, which fluctuates quite a bit depending on all kinds of different things that you can never really predict. But let's go over petroleum engineering real quick. Uh, last year, about 2,100 people did graduate with a bachelor's degree and they were awarded a bachelor's degree in petroleum engineering. The early career pay is 94,000 and the mid career pay is an absolutely ridiculous $176,000 a year. That is the highest of all the different types of bachelor's degrees, period. So petroleum engineering is absolutely ridiculous. Um, it sets the bar when it comes to salary. So the salary score that I calculated is literally 100 out of 100. Uh, it is the highest on the entire list. The demand score, however, which I calculate by using several different methods, but mostly looking up how many job postings have the word petroleum engineering degree in them. And I usually look them up on monster.com or in deed.com and you know only 301 job postings actually had that as a keyword so the demand score relatively low about 34 and then on top of that it's probably bad because of the fact that the economy is down however the meaning score is one of the highest on the entire list it's about 72 percent so the next one, number nine, very similar, kind of in the same boat, is going to be aerospace engineering. Last year, about 4,000 people were awarded this degree. You start off making about $69,000 a year and then $118,000 in mid-career pay. So very solid salary, again, one of the highest paying. Now the demand score is actually pretty decent. There's about 1,048 job listings that have uh, aerospace engineering degree as a keyword. So demand score is decent. And again, the airline industry, aerospace in general, also does seem to kind of fluctuate with the economy. So it is one of those where, you know, a lot of people end up getting laid off at certain points. Next one on the list, number eight is one where a couple years ago, I put it as my dark horse candidate and all signs are pointing towards this one getting better and better. And uh, I think it's a really good option, especially if you're somebody who's interested in medical, but you also want to do engineering. And that is, of course, biomedical engineering. Last year, about 6,900 people graduated with this one. The early career pay is about $66,000 a year. Mid-career pay is $114,000. So again, pretty good salary there. Even when you compare it to the other engineering degrees, it's pretty decent. And of course, engineering degrees have the highest salaries out of all the different types of majors out there. The demand score is going to be 100 and then on top of that it has a relatively good meaning score as well. That does tend to be a good indicator of you being happy with your job long term, right? So not just happy for a few years, but finding that lasting fulfillment. Number seven on the list is going to be civil engineering. One of the most common types of engineering degrees. Last year, about 13,000 people graduated with this one. It is one of the lower paying engineering degrees. Early career pay is about 60,000. Mid career pay is 102,000. So the salary score only came out to be about 69. However, about 11,000 listings had this as a keyword, right? So that is very good. Uh, the demand score is gonna be 103. So yeah, civil engineering, relatively flexible. Uh, when you look at all the different factors, which I've done when I've broken down you know, all of these degrees and videos, um, there are some other things that kind of keep it down a little bit, um, but it can be a really good option for the right person. 
Number six on the list is going to be chemical engineering. And this is one where about 10,000 people graduated last year. This is one of the highest paying types of engineering degrees. You're gonna start off making about $72,000 a year and mid-career pay is 127,000. Now, when it comes to the number of jobs available, there's about 4,000 job listings that specifically mention chemical engineering degree. But one thing to note about chemical engineering is a lot of the time you're gonna to have to move to some like semi-remote place in order to land your first job. Later on, once you've got some experience, you can probably live in a more desirable place. But in order to get those first two years of entry level experience, um, you might have to move somewhere that you don't want to move. Number five on the list is going to be one of my favorites. I'm very, very bullish on this one. It's going to be industrial engineering. About 5,200 people graduated with this degree last year. You start off making $67,000 a year and 110,000 in mid-career pay. So pretty good salary there. Now the demand score is about 101, which is pretty good for this one, but I think more than just the demand score, unfortunately there's certain things you just can't really quantify. Uh, industrial engineering is extremely useful and it's also extremely flexible in many ways and in some ways it's flexible in ways that we can't even predict, right? Because we don't know how fast automation is gonna happen and industrial engineering is going to be one of the best possible careers if that does happen fast. So in some ways, this one, in my opinion, is relatively future-proof. You're gonna be learning a lot of engineering skills, but also on the other hand, you're going to be learning a lot of business skills. So yeah, really solid option, like this one a lot. Um, I wouldn't even be surprised if it rises up the list in the next five to 10 years. Next one on the list, Old Faithful Mechanical Engineering. This is the most common engineering degree with about 32,000 graduates last year. One thing to mention with engineering degrees and just degrees in general, is sometimes being a common degree is actually a huge advantage. And the reason for that is because it's basically like a brand name. So when I say brand name, what I mean by that is, you know, if you're one of the biggest companies in the world, pretty much everybody recognizes your brand. And same thing goes for degrees. There's degrees out there where pretty much nobody knows what it is, or very few people know what it is. And then even the ones who do, have they ever actually hired someone with that degree? So, you know, one example is an up and comer, which is mechatronics engineering, and that's a great degree, but I mean, how many people have actually hired people with a mechatronics engineering degree versus hiring people with a mechanical engineering degree? So that brand name factor is very strong. Uh, I'm not saying it should be, but it just is. Chances are a lot of the time, if there's two candidates and they're exactly equal, they're gonna go for the one where they recognize the degree because they've hired people with a mechanical engineering degree before, they're gonna feel more comfortable with that, more familiar with it, and they're likely gonna go with that person. So with that being said, uh, early career pay is $66,000 a year, mid-career pay is 110,000, pretty decent. Demand score is 105, also very good. So yeah, this is a good one if you are not 100% sure what you wanna do and you wanna keep some flexibility flexibility, uh, really, really good one for you to go with. That's what I always tell people when I you know, answer emails and that sort of thing. If you're not 100% sure which one you wanna go with, uh, go with the mechanical engineering degree. Because let's be honest, a lot of the time, as much as I say it, you know, you're not 100% sure which career path you wanna go down when you're in college. You kinda wanna have that flexibility so that you can have the option to change your mind in the future. Number three on the list is another degree that's relatively flexible and also very, very good, and that is electrical engineering. Last year, about 16,000 people graduated with this one, and it's also one of the highest paying ones, uh, starting off about $70,000 a year, and mid-career pay is 119,000. Now, the demand score on this one is 109, and even more than that, there's 16,000 graduates, yet, Electrical engineering degree is mentioned 28,000 times when you look it up on websites like indeed.com 
or monster.com. That means there's nearly twice as many job listings that mention an electrical engineering degree than there are people graduating with an electrical engineering degree. That is a very good sign. And one thing that's great about this one is it's a lot more flexible. You see electrical engineers working in the technology industry. Some of them end up becoming computer programmers. There's a lot of different you know routes that you can go down. Sometimes they work in hardware instead of software. So yeah, if you know you wanna work in the technology industry, but you're not exactly sure what you want to do, this could be a really good one for you to go for. Number two on the list is going to be computer engineering. Last year, about 7,000 people graduated with this one, and the pay is even higher than electrical engineering. You start off about 72,000 a year and 120,000 in mid-career pay. Now the demand score is 107, but looking into that even a little more deeply, there's 7,000 graduates, but 21,000 listings mention computer engineering degree. That's a three to one ratio there. So again, very, very good sign that this is a degree that is high in demand. So again, with a computer engineering degree, you might end up working in hardware. That would make a lot of sense, but a lot of people graduate with it and then end up working in software. So they might end up as a software engineer doing coding. And there's so many other positions in technology that a computer engineering degree would set you up for. Number one on the list is going to be software engineering. This is one where you're learning a skill that is ridiculously valuable, which is computer programming. You're learning how to code. Only about a thousand graduates last year. Uh, however, you start off making about $69,000 a year and 112,000 in mid-career pay. Now get this, that salary is good. Um, a lot of the time in technology, uh, you get more than just your base salary. You're also getting bonuses. You're also getting like ridiculous benefits, stock incentives from the company, all kinds of really good stuff like that. Technology industry is known for giving people the best benefits. But check this out. 1,000 graduates last year, 77,000 job listings mention software engineering degree. A 77 to one ratio. If that isn't a sign that this one is high in demand, I, I don't know how to tell if something's high in demand, apparently. 127 demand score just off the charts. So not only is this gonna be good now, it's gonna be good in the future, it's gonna be relatively future-proof. You're also gonna be working in one of the best industries that has some of the highest job satisfaction scores. Um, there's a lot to like here. Hope you enjoyed the video. Didn't get too deep on things here. Uh, check out my other videos. Uh, I think I have made a dedicated video for every single one on this list. So you can just look that up on my channel. But I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you haven't done it already, come on, hit the like button. Seriously. Uh, also, hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc. that you have on the video. And I will see you next time.